welcome achievers is something a little different it's more of like a kind of reacts as you know if you listen to the regular scheduled content that i do play destiny on the reg regular of course and i wanted to talk about the state of the game that came out today ahead of the august 22nd showcase that i'll also be covering in a video just like this one when it comes and i wanted to just sit down and discuss this with everyone as i've read it i read it again i let it meld over me i took a shower my, my hair's just still wet from that thought about it process all the information talked to some friends about it and i wanted to just sit down and discuss this with you as i think it kind of paints a picture of what the rest of destinies might look like until we know more from the showcase and of course when final shape launches I wanted to talk this through with everyone, get some opinions, and let you know what I think. And conversely, of course, I want to know what you think out there. What did you think about the state of the game? What did you think about my points that I'll be bringing up? Et cetera, et cetera. So, let's begin. All right, let's get started. State of the game, August 2023. This is, of course, by Joe Blackburn. He's the game director for Destiny 2, and, of course, I have it on my screen if you'd like to read this as well. If you're on watching this via computer or phone or whatever you that you are. So you can go through all of this yourself. I'm not going to bore you with like the introduction and things. Of course, that he hints at the Destiny 2 showcase on August 22nd, which I'm sure everyone knows about if you're watching this video. Also, uh, we will hear about that a few more times throughout this write up. And of course, the final shape teaser showing Kate six coming back and these things, you know, trying to opening, not shocking opening paragraph is just get excited right so let's start with the first bracket addressing feedback we've been tracking a number of player feedback items over the past few months while we've covered some issues recently including the roadmap for improvements and general stability it's time for a detailed check-in on our progress in several areas of the game now let's start with the ritual updates we've heard plenty of feedback from players that our core pl ritual playlist should feel more consistently rewarding to play and those awards should drop more frequently, regardless of the activities you like to play. We agree. Let's talk about what we've done so far and what we're doing in Season 22 to achieve this. With Season of the Deep, we've upgraded the weekly ritual challenge rewards to exotic engrams to give everyone consistent sources of materials to focus the exact exotic armor they want to run. Quick side note, I think this was actually a really good change for new players because you really had no way of really getting exotics easily outside from just grinding your eyeballs off on a lost sector which i can't imagine is very fun after the first couple times especially again if you're new because you would then have to be a new player which you would then have to get to a, spe a specific power level in that season to be able to even do them in the first place and and then so this is an easy introduction way and i actually like it although i uh I do, <laughs> this is a, just a personal thing because I've played the game for so long. I, I It's annoying because it's another engram in my uh, inventory that I have to go, dis, uh, you know, decipher, which is a little annoying. But aside from that, I don't, I think it's actually a very good change. In season 22, we're updating those weekly ritual challenge requirements so players can complete their nine challenges in any ritual playlist they'd like. As opposed to having to complete three each across Vanguard, Crucible, and Gambit playlists. We'll also be increasing the frequency of ritual engram drops after completing ritual activities, and we're making the latest ritual loot pool weapons focusable at the respective vendors at the start of the season for the first time rather than you need to wait for the falling cheese in the chase of those god rolls. I always thought this was incredibly annoying. Why would you introduce the gun and then not put it in the loot pool so I could not focus it? I understand why you want me to play the playlist. But I have all these things. I have all the weapons I want. Most, and I don't think this is crazy to say, most of the guns in the ritual playlist are not very good at all. So I want the new stuff. I want, like, for instance, Randy's throwing knife is is the you know the the new thing now. I have to play Crucible and then just hope I get a drop. And then after that, I have to hope it's good, which is that's not how that works with ritual guns because they have so many perks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We're loading up our ritual vendors with fresh weapons in Season 22, including the unending Tempest Stasis Submachine Gun in the Crucible. Thank God we're getting another Stasis Submachine Gun. 
Luna Regolith 3, Solar Sniper Rifle and Strikes. Quay Zofan, Zofan 5 is a Void Machine Gun and Gambit. Why are we getting another Void Machine Gun in the game? Cataf- Catafric GL3 is going to be a Strand Grenade Launcher in Trials of Osiris. I find it interesting that they're not saying the frame for the Strand Grenade Launcher. Uh, is it rapid fire? Is it adaptive? Is it a you know like what is it? I would like to know that because hope at least I'll be happy I guess if it's not rapid fire. One we already have a rapid fire strand. Two rapid fire GLs are horrible. We're also bringing some fan favorites back into their ritual players, including the Igneous Hammer. Thank God, Solar Hand Cannon and Trials, and revamping Warden's Law and a brand new archetype as a Nightfall reward. These are pretty much just things that we're just they're just updating us on. We've already kind of known this stuff, but at least we get to know it now. This is how we're making our quests more rewarding, and what we're doing in each specific area. Let's start with PVP. So first thing they're starting off PVP. Very interesting here. Something that's a major pain point for many people in the community. I, I think I would say. Thanks to the hard work of multiple teams, we've delivered several additions to PvP over the past few seasons. These include the launch of the Competitive Division, multiple new game modes, a revamp of Trials of Osiris, new Competitive and Trials Awards, fire team matchmaking improvements, new rotator playlists, PvP-specific weapon tuning, several quality of life improvements, and more. I'm trying to be as flowery as possible in this opening statement, I see. However, we know our hardcore of PvP players want more maps, fear of cheaters, and ever-evolving meta that feels good to compete in all right the most frequent feedback we see is that there's just not enough new pvp content specifically new maps to set expectations our studio structure is built oh here comes the bad news to support more overarching updates to pvp like the ones above rather than focusing exclusively on maps when we do focus our resources on building new crucible maps, it comes with a trade-off of multiple teams' bandwidth on work that contributes to a variety of experiences that players also hold dear, such as new story or exotic mission content, core activities that make up the foundation of each season, or new destinations. Similarly, bringing back reprised maps also involves extensive porting to the latest version of Destiny 2 which requires additional resources to ensure the map work correctly for multiple game modes and play styles for years to come. So I think this is already where people would stop and go, what? So uh, I I would also like to stop here and go, what? So it's quite interesting that they've continuously just been like, you're not getting new maps. It's just not happening. You're not getting old maps either. You're going to get what we give you, and frankly, you're just going to have to deal with it. It's just that kind of, just, you know, he's kind of putting it in a very nice way. He's putting that exact sentence to you. I have problems with multiple of these things. One to two things. I don't, I, the, 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 it's always interesting when I hear the argument why we can't have something in a video game, and it's just, it's hard. Is that really the argument we have? We don't have something else to say. We don't have like, well, we can't because I would have to, and you specifically mentioned, this would kill this thing, right? We need these people to work on these things for the core experience. It's 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 quite interesting that, that something can't be, sa- if it really is one or the other, one of those things can't be sacrificed. I, I'm, as a person who plays all of the time do i need an exotic mission every season i don't i don't need that so we can we can go one season with that one that's okay i think that's okay i think we could say hey this season no exotic mission there won't be a new exotic you know what we're gonna put an exotic in pvp and it's gonna be like a for fun one where you just gotta play matches or something and we're gonna add three maps or something like that if it's really that big of a deal sacrifice something What's wrong with that? I don't see the problem. If that is actually what's stopping you. We can't do this because it would, you know, take away from this, this, this. Sacrifice one of them then. I think the PvP players probably should be given that, (laughs) you know, at this point. As just a sorry for the last three years kind of thing, right? Uh, We gave you just Junction. You didn't like that. Uh, Almost no one likes that in the entirety of the game. And really, Disjunction is just a remade version of another map, almost. So it's like, okay, cool. They brought back a D1 map, um, Cathedral of Dusk, which they kind of 
made new, but not really. Like, they added some outside things, and they just ported it. Which, again, cool. But, but like, you know, let's get some more stuff in there. Why is it just the one map? Why can't we get a little more creative? Is it really that? Again, I'll say it. I'll be that guy. I'll be the scapegoat for everyone that everyone can make fun of. Is it really that hard? I'm sure it is. But that is an excuse not to do something. There's plenty of things I think that are hard, and doing this show is hard. But I'm doing it. I'm not saying that's equal. But I am saying just saying something is hard is not a good excuse for me to say, well, it's hard, so that's why we don't do it. What? what? And again, I that always brings me back to my central point. I've said this on my show all the time. If, is this marathon's fault? It seems like that's just the question, right? And I think it's unequivocally yes. I've said this for way, way too long, and I'm sure if you listen to the show regularly, you're tired of hearing it, but I think the answer is yeah, it is. It is. It is. They clearly have lost way too many PvP-centric employees to that environment, and they can't make it work. They can't. It's obvious to me. There, can, there has to be a reason. There is no discernible reason why we can't have a PvP map once a season. There isn't. There is not. That is not something that is physically impossible. That is, there is no reality where that is an impossible. That is an impossible thing to do. There's just no way, regardless of how we move the chess pieces. There's just no. I refuse to believe that. It's clear to me that they would need Marathon to be good because that's going to be now their second tent pole of Bungie. They need that to work, so they brought the big guns on and you can see that in their hiring processes and how they've moved around some high key level people from Bungie to marathon mid development to strengthen the development process of the game. I don't blame them. I'm not here saying that's wrong of you to do, but I, but you are allowed to call things out if you do not agree with them or say that that isn't a, a good enough response. What is wrong? You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's, quite silly honestly that we're just they're just sitting here like yeah no i mean if we did that it would just you know take too many people from other stuff and i'm like mm, there's a lot of people working at bungie a lot 1500 probably if like the number that i just found out today is accurate you know how many people that is it's a lot of people doesn't seem like that makes quite a bit of sense, does it? I don't know. Maybe I'm missing the mark here. And if there's someone out there that would like to counter me in some way, please do. Again, I don't bring anything out there to not be challenged. I'm saying these things as just my opinion. If you have something out there that you don't agree with, please let me know. But as far as I understand, and as far as I'm seeing here, saying something is hard and we're just not doing it, that's just not acceptable. They can pretty... What? We're getting a, a map a year? It's so hard to make a map in Destiny 2. They can do one singular map a whole year? Moving on. With that said, we have some exciting content coming to PvP this month that several teams have brought to life. As well as an update on our advances in game security to combat cheaters, a preview of upcoming sandbox shakeups, and more details coming next week on how the general PvP sandbox gear and ability balance will evolve. For Season 22, we have a new Vex Network theme map debuting along with the new Relic 6v6 mode, the gunplay-focused checkmate modifier for multiple modes. Excuse me, a new competitive Ascendant Division emblem and more Relic and Checkmate will both kick off in Crucible Labs throughout the season so we can gather feedback on how they are received. We'll have more to share in the showcase, but let's dive in a bit more right now. So you can see a little picture here. I have it, of course, on the screen if you'd like to see. looks very cool. looks a lot like the Legend Avalon mission, of course, because that's where you were. You were in the Vet, Vet, uh, Vex Network. So, of course, it's going to look like that. I, I love, I can't wait for this map. It, it looks cool. Uh, I'll be curious, what you know, what's the size? Is it kind of a smaller map? Is it kind of a mid-sized map? Is it kind of a large map? I'm going to get into the game modes after I cover all of these game modes uh, because it's gotten quite interesting with how many game modes they're adding to this. And I think I know why they're adding all these. Let's get into it. New PvP map, Multiplex. For the newest PvP battlefield, we wanted to create an asymmetrical map, so it's asymmetrical, using a Vex environment as a backdrop that would work well for multiple game modes. With Vex Network playing such a crucial role in the story during Lightfall's year, 
We felt now that it was a perfect time to deliver this map. Although many of us have been thinking about Lo-Fi VX map for the Crucible, the challenge of this palette was possible lack of player orientation in the play space. We thought bringing the Mars palette into the VEX network realm would be a great way to mitigate this whole adding an evocative look. While, sorry, while adding an evocative look. Narratively, this space is the middle of compiling the infinite forest, so this is what you'll see in action. Wait for footage of this new map in the showcase. So, of course, in the showcase, we'll be seeing what the map looks like. Checkmate. Checkmate is a modifier where rich PRI Mary weapon fights can happen more often, and gun skill can be augmented by communication and strong positioning. Primary weapon damage has been tuned to feel different than the rest of the game without being jarring, reducing the gap between faster killing weapons and the average time to kill, and in general pushing longer range primary into slower killing profiles. Player health has been increased, all ability cooldowns are lengthened, and special ammunition must be earned via gameplay. It is not dropped on death. This all results in slightly longer combat encounters that reward skill and consistency. Checkmate will be available in Crucible Labs from week 5 to 10. We will start off with two weeks of checkmate control, then switch it up to two weeks of checkmate survival, and the final two weeks of checkmate rumble to finish off the trial run for season 22. Quick note on checkmate. This looks very good. Also, I found it interesting. So if I don't know if everyone remembers this. When Lightfall launched, Shroud, if you know this person, it's a very, very well-known sh uh, streamer. I'm sure you know at least of Shroud. Shroud, very big, competitive person, plays a lot of the most competitive games out there valorant i think he plays csgo as well you know these these types of things right and he was actually quoted and got a little viral clip of him saying you know why isn't there a mode that just relies on the gunplay and there's less or i i think he said actually no skills or anything like that and he got a little bit of flack from some people i remember seeing this um back then twitter of course of, uh, of saying no that's what makes uh, the game special in these things and it's funny that they kind of agreed with them not saying they got the idea i'm sure this was already in the works back then but it's interesting that they kind of got that idea it's like yeah no we could do this kind of checkmate thing we we can make primaries matter more and gun skill matter more and only have the abilities as a very rare one-off i actually appreciate that quite a bit it's different i've been wanting something like this for a while where it's just kind of Hey, you know, let's up the TTK, which of course time to kill. Let's make it a little longer to kill someone. Let's make it a little more strategic. Well, not a lot, not a lot. I don't want this to be like Rainbow Six or something, but like just a little bit more where you you can play corners a little bit harder. You can uh, maybe uh, own a lane a little a little more with a little more um, certainty of of not being killed too fast. That 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 stuff I think is very very fun. So I like that, and I like being having to earn the special ammo. That's kind of cool. I like that. Relic is a 6v6 party mode where players wreak havoc and destruction on their foes with third weapons. Of course, important to note, it says party mode. So that's something like, uh, the, the, what's it called? The, the one with the rocket launcher, Team Scorch, and these things. Uh, relics include the Aegis from Vault of Glass, the Synaptic Spear from Season of the Risen. I love that one. And the Scythe from Season of the Haunted. That one's cool. It's just haunted was so bad. Each player charges their personal relic energy by defeating opponents with their normal loadout. Upon reaching full charge, players can acquire a relic from the relic depot. Defeating relic holders and using relics to defeat opponents earns points for their team. Whereas Checkmate is heavily focused on gunfights, relics is intended to provide lighthearted gameplay that can be enjoyed by anyone. Similar to Mayhem and Team Scorch, relic will be available in Crucible Labs from week 1 to week 4, and again in week 11, until the close of the season. We look forward to hearing your feedback on both Checkmate and Relic when they roll out next season. Quick notes on the two new game modes. We're getting a lot of game modes. Don't know why. One, one. Two, why are we getting the game modes on these certain big maps and these things? That's always found interesting. Bungie loves doing that. They love making a game mode and just putting it on any map. Why? I don't know. Uh, not every game mode works on every map. Uh, disjunction doesn't feel great in trials. That's just that's just how it works. You know, it's too big. So it's just that's just weird. That is a quick thing I wanted to put. Two, why are we getting so many game modes? These sound all good. I'm not saying we shouldn't get these, but I'm like, we're getting a lot of game modes. And I'm assuming it's so it feels like you're getting new content. It's what I imagine is happening here. So you feel like there's new things coming. Oh, you know, you don't have nothing. It's just you got you got the you know, checkmate coming. Uh, you know, that's that's what I, I think is happening here. Oh, well, let's see, though. Matchmaking improvements. Our quest to consistently improve matchmaking is always ongoing. And in season 22, we're modifying our loose skill based matchmaking settings for control and iron banner. 
These new settings will look to improve matchmaking and times and experiences for players who find themselves at the upper and lower ends of the skill spectrum, and for those playing in low uh, population regions or times. The meme is also adding loose fire team matchmaking to the crucible rotators, including labs, to ensure teams are always evenly matched against similar fire team sizes without the need for a freelance node. Additionally, we'll be tackling an issue with the lobby balancing that can misallocate players over certain skill levels. I'll be honest, I don't feel like I'm one of these people who are on the tops or, or lows. I feel like I'm just kind of in the middle and I can kind of be put anywhere and it's fine. Uh, so I can't speak to any of this, unfortunately. I can't really give any insight. Maybe this will help people who are in those uh, lower outliers find better matches. Who knows? Looking forward ahead, we're planning to deliver a new Iron Banner mode for Season 22. Why are we getting another Iron Banner mode? Along with a brand new Hockey Aggressive Frame Strand Pulse Rifle. That's kind of cool. And as our newest competitive division weapon reward. That's that's kind of cool. I like that. The Mercular... Mercurial... Mercurial... Oh, I'm, I'm getting a little tongue-tied here. Sorry. Mercurial Overreach Adaptive Frame Arc Sniper Rifle will remain available for competitors throughout Season 22. That's very cool. So you have a whole other season to grind the new sniper rifle until we get to season 23 and you get the new strand one. Cool. As a reminder, we're also focusing our map reprisal efforts on porting the Citadel from 2018 to the Crucible in season 2023. Or sorry, in season 23. We have all fond memories of dominating control with our fire teams on this one. We can't wait for you to do the latest on our out there in the Dreaming City. I faintly remember this one. Uh, I remember it looking pretty cool. But I don't have much to add here. I'm, I'm happy there's more maps. I, at this point, I'll take any maps. Although a lot of those um, year one maps were pretty bad. Um, of course, this is a year one map. I'm not saying we should just blanket put all the year one maps in there. Because not, you know, not all of them are good. But this one I remember liking a lot. Vanguard. The Vanguard place is currently a solid place with a healthy population. I'm curious what their definition of healthy is. And we have more addition additions coming. First up, Vanguard Medals. Vanguard Medals will be available in Vanguard Ops and Nightfalls starting in Season 22. This makes me very happy. After first being introduced in last year's Guardian Games and the continued success in this year's event, we have decided to bring them in full time to spice things up in our Vanguard playlist. Yes, that is very happy to hear. Medals will continue contribute to scoring allowing players to attain higher scores and reputation multipliers by performing unique actions and doing cool things our goal here is to reward players for playing well and not require players to go out of the way to grind for score in short we do not want you to feel like you have to compromise your build in order to boost your score with additional medals it's worth noting that some medals will remain guardian game staples and not be available in our vanguard playlist so don't expect finishers to grant you a medal in nightfalls and there will be several new medals specific to vanguard playlists when they launch you can expect to see a few more in Season 23. Additional selection of active medals will be turned based on current active modifiers, such as surges, to ensure a variety of builds are, are used for acquiring medals. We recently focused our team uh, resources into varied and frequent seasonal activities, such as Battlegrounds, that can later make their way into the Vanguard playlist alongside our strikes. Okay. And eventually serve as new additions to Lightfall and Grandmaster playlists. While this can come at the cost of other content in a given year, we feel this exchange has been worth the extra vetment for the overall health of our playlists. Playlists. Interesting they're saying playlists. Uh, it should be playlist. Vanguard is a single playlist, you know, with, with multiple things inside it. I find it interesting that Nightfall and Grandmaster, and they're like, oh, it's it's good for our playlist. You know, eh, that's, I think we're, we're pulling definitions to make it sound better here. As a result, we'll have additional Battlegrounds coming into the Nightfall and Grandmaster rotations in Season 22 and 23 to complete uh, to keep players on their toes before the final shape launches. Sorry for that. I need to take a sip. Now, there's a couple things here. Uh, one, uh, not all battle battlegrounds are created equal. I don't think that's crazy for me to say at all. Uh, not everyone loves each one equally. Uh, there's some good and there's some bad ones. Let's make sure we're keeping the good and bad ones separate. They're not. They're just adding them all in there. Uh, I wish they would actually sit down and be like, look, this one's not good. Let's not put this in there. Let's put an actual good one in there. I'm reminded of a few heist battlegrounds of these things. I, I I get them mixed up, so that might not even be a good example. But there's battlegrounds in the playlist that when I play them, I go, oh, my God, I would love to play a strike in this thing. Like, sometimes I can't believe I'm saying this. Sometimes I miss strikes. <laughs> like, after all the times I've played them, uh, I, I don't love the battlegrounds. Some of them I do love. For instance, uh, the Grandmaster for this season was um the moon psyops battleground which the psyops i love all of those i'll take any of those I, I, those are those are my favorite ones but the problem being 
like I love those, but then I'm getting all these other ones that are, that weren't very good. So I like it, it's it makes I don't know it makes playing the Vanguard plays a slog. I wish it was easier to like choose what you like. I wish there was a favoriting system too, maybe that you can like like oh you know I I like these maps. So like can I just play like some of these uh, over like this and you know favor the matchmaking that way? You know it, you know maybe I won't always get that, but maybe it'll favor that. Yeah. I don't know, but I'm I'm tired of everything just being thrown in the Vanguard Ops just to be like, look, you know, all the seasonal content we had, well, we're putting it in there, so you can't say there isn't new content here because there, look, it's it's in there now. Again, some are very very good, and some straight up is is not. It's just not. They're saying it. Look at that gambit. They're saying it. Gambit. As many of you have noticed, we've been quiet on campus since last year's overhaul that launched alongside the Witch Queen. If you, if I remember correctly, I remember um, them saying the last time we talked about Gambit that the numbers were acceptable. I feel like I remember hearing that or something there. There were, there were like more than people thought it would be or something. In that revamp, the team made significant changes across five categories in Gambit. Core activity fundamentals, primeval tuning, invasions, ammo economy, and rewards. Unfortunately, these updates didn't move the needle for player engagement. Although we know our Gambit fans mostly care about new and returning maps, this is an area of the game with lower engagement that would take resources away from more popular parts of the game to shore up. Let's stop right there. Why are there two different examples why they won't add maps to, to the game modes being used here? So now it's there's not enough player engagement to add the maps. But you said in PvP it was too hard. So is it easy to make Gambit map modes, but there's just not enough people, so you just won't do it? Like, which is it? What is happening here? I thought it was too hard to make these. It's so hard to make the maps, right? So what? why are, why, what's, so, so now it's, well, we would love to make the maps, but there's not enough people playing. So if there were more people playing, Gambit would get maps then. Is that the, is that it? Which is it? That's that's kind of the theme I think we get here in this kind of state of the game. There's a lot of like kind of back speaking to things that I feel like are making his argue not he's not arguing anything here, but his points weak in a lot of these things. And Joe Blackburn is is a genius. I'm not here saying I'm smarter than him or I could be doing any of this better than him. I'm not saying any of that. I'm I'm saying why are some of these things seem like they're side speaking? Right. I understand you being very straightforward here with, look, not enough people play it. We're not going to make more maps. OK, so if more people played it, would you make more maps then? And also, how can you say not enough people play it because you haven't been updating it? You did your one overhaul and then you haven't done anything else. You haven't added a map. There's not been a weapon that's been good in that mode. Ever really since the launch of the thing. Like, since when you got Malfeasance and back then when there was a lot fewer guns, I remember it being a lot uh, uh, of a bigger deal to play Gambit to try and get a couple guns and these things. And, of course, Gambit Prime was a thing back then as well. Uh, way, way, way back then uh, to try and get uh, grind out weapons and, and pinnacles and these things. But you're not adding content for us to go and play it. So why would I play it? I don't hate Gambit. I actually used to loathe the Gambit. But every now and then when I play it, I don't actually hate my time in there. I, I actually kind of have fun, especially if I have a team in there. And I can really, like, talk with people and have fun with them. But you haven't added anything compelling to do. I'll give a prime example. And this is an extreme example, I believe. But I think it it it, it brings me to a point where... Let's talk about the Immortal SMG and Trials. Trials probably saw like the giant, the biggest engagement it's ever seen, I believe, since its overhaul. When they introduced the Immortal SMG in its first weekend. So if we add incentives to play the mode, people will probably show up. It's wild, I know, but. Maybe we give Gambit a good gun and people will go play it. Is like, why? Why is that crazy? And also, why? And another thing, I, I said I'd get back to it later. Why are they getting a void machine gun? No one needs a void machine gun, Bungie. No one. 
we have commemoration. Power creep has happened. We have the power creep gun. We're keeping commemoration until Killing Tally gets nerfed or Reconstruction gets nerfed, which I don't see that happening. LMGs will get nerfed before any of that happens, which means either gun will be ba equally bad. So who cares, right? I just find it quite interesting that we're saying not enough people play it, so we won't make maps. Well, we're not adding anything to the modes, so why would people play it? It's been the same mode for three years. No new maps. Uh, you had the overhaul, which changed a lot of things up. I'll give you that. So sorry, it's been pretty much a year since since like giant changes happened uh, other than the overhaul. If we exclude the overhaul, it, it was like two and a half, three years. Um, technically, Gambit got worse in that time frame because they took away all the stuff in the Beyond Light era. If we go that far back, right? So I I, I don't know. I just find it quite interesting that we're using these things to being like, yeah, you know, no one plays it. All these things. Same with uh, either uh, Vanguard wasn't big, but PvP kind of a similar situation where, you know, it's, oh, it's too hard to do it. But, you know, here's all these modes and things like what is going on over there? Why is it? Why is why is it so hard? I, can we point to another developer that just says it's too hard and we're not going to do it? I'm sure there's examples, but like, can we br can we start bringing some other up so I can so we can compare and contrast? Like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense because of X reason and Y reason. I know they have these giant, they have these giant studios and very, and they're very expensive. Rent's expensive. They have thousand, they have a th over a thousand people working there, right? Very expensive. If we average out to everyone making around a hundred grand, I mean, you got, uh, it's like ninety million dollars, or wait, sorry, it's more than ninety. It's like a, it's like a hundred something million dollars just to, just to keep going, just to keep paying people. It's not cheap. I'm not saying it is. But figure, you know, figure it out. Figure it out. It's hard. It's just hard to take these excuses and be like, yeah, okay. You know, and we're just supposed to eat it up and keep consuming, you know, keep eating it up. And I say this as a lover of the game. I'm buying. Look, I'll be the first one to tell you. I'm buying Final Shape. It's happening, right? I'm not going to be the guy to not buy it. But it doesn't mean I'm not able to give critiques about the game. And also, and you know, at that point, could be safe for another time. While we don't have plans to dedicate more resources to significantly transform Gambit, is anyone asking for that? We do not. We do have a few updates planned for the year of the final shape. These include porting the Cathedral of Scars map. Why was it ever taken away? And its beautiful dreaming city setting in its latest version of Destiny 2, as well as adding the Shadow Legion and Lucent Hive and enemy types. First off, those last two things, that's very cool. I would love to fight Lucent Hive in Gambit. Another reason, like, why isn't this already there? This, why didn't this launch with Witch Queen? You know, just a lot of weird stuff happening. Two, why was Cathedral Scars even taken out? It's Dreaming City. It doesn't make sense. Because the Dreaming City wasn't taken out. So why did that map have to go? Do you understand why I'm confused about all this? Because you can say it needs to go in the new engine, the, the Dreaming City, isn't it? So, like, why did this have to go? Why did the Dreaming City map in PvP have to go? It's just a lot of weird stuff when you really delve into a lot of Destiny stuff. A lot of stuff that doesn't make a lot of sense, to be honest with you. Before then, we're making Gambit entirely optional to maximize your rewards unless you're looking for a piece of gear that's specific to the mode. Gambit will continue to serve as a source of exotic engrams via weekly challenges, though, as we mentioned above. You'll be able to complete all your weekly challenges in any ritual you'd like starting in Season 22. If you want to stick to Gant Vanguard or Crucible challenges without touching Gambit, now you can. Wow. We're also reducing the number of Gambit-specific seasonal challenges starting in Season 22. So players won't need to bake modes to be able to earn that big purse of Bright Dust for completing nearly every challenge in the season. Finally, we're adding Fireteam matchmaking to Gambit next season which will replace the freelance node and should result in a faster, better matchmaking by combining both Gambit playlists. We'll keep an eye on reception and player engagement after these additions take place, and we hope you'll visit Old Drifter next season to get your hands on this new Void Machine Gun. Again, no one needs a Void Machine Gun. No one. No one needs a Void Machine Gun. There's one in Vogue. There's Commemoration. There's the two raid ones that I guarantee will be better. You don't need this. Now, I cannot believe... And an official statement from <laughs> from a bunch of from Joe Blackburn himself saying that we're making it easier so you don't have to play Gambit. That is some wild fucking shit right there. And I apologize for cursing out of nowhere there. But that is that is what 
<laughs> could you imagine working on a project and your boss says, we're making it easier so people don't have to interact with you or see the fruits of your labor? That is a backhand if I've ever seen one. I mean, wow. Just wow. I, I'm sorry if you like Gambit because they just. I mean, they just told you we're not touching the mode. We're not going to get new content. This is Gambit. We're making it easier so you don't have to play it. It's like, what? <laughs> wow, that is. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. That sounds like something you would just do and not say you would do. Right. You don't have to announce all your changes. Like, you don't have to say, like, hey, we're making it easier for you not to play game. That's pretty, that's, that's pretty crazy. Pretty, pretty crazy. We're, <laughs> wow. I feel bad for anyone working on anything Gambit. Clearly, no one is. But if someone out there is, I feel bad because you're, you, you know, you, you're a major boss just was like, you know what? I want, I don't want Gambit to be forced on anyone. Let's, let's just make it easier for them not to play it. Gambit is like what makes destiny so good it's a mixture of pv and pvp it's something that is very very good and it's it's crazy that they just squandered this thing that had a lot of a lot of potential i always wanted i had this crazy they'll never do this so i'll just say it here this is free if, if another game wants someone listening out there is like oh you know w wanting to make a game you steal this idea and take it i'll never do anything with it but i always wanted gambit to be you know the same as it is you do moats you do moats right boom moat 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 right I want to where if you get to that threshold where you can invade somebody, I wanted a specific mode to where two random people are taken from both sides of uh, the gambit are thrown into an arena. And maybe like the arena is like above the map and you can kind of see like like through it, maybe. And it's like in this obstacle and it kind of looks taken -y and kind of glassy look. Right. They take you, throw you up there. You're now fighting in this arena versus one of the other person. The winner gets uh, maybe a moat or heavy ammo or something for, for the whole team. Like, how is that not in the game already? Like, I feel like that would be boom. Awesome. I feel like that'd be sick. Like, it, it's kind of like a work on. Um, uh, if you ever played you know, like Warzone and you die, you get to go to the Gulag to like get another life. You know, it's kind of like that, but. Instead, uh, you, you know, you hit that threshold of uh, uh, 45, I believe it is. Yeah, 45. So you hit 45, uh, a couple seconds pass and your drifter maybe says, you know, like, oh, the arena is opening and like they take two, you know, one person each team randomly put you put you in the arena in the sky. Again, you could look up, you could see them fighting and stuff uh, and they're, you know, having a shootout in the like, oh, that'd be so cool. And and and. And in the in that response, they just go, we're making it easier for you to, not to play Gambit. A long time ago, we shared a plan to address concerns on reward balance. Players have pointed out that we didn't release a new armor set for the ritual playlist, Vanguard, Crucible, Gambit, with, set, with Lightfall, as previously called out in our yearly release schedule. Delivering ritual armor sets at this rate we have in the past have become increasingly challenging, especially considering these sets have historically had very low adoption by players as both base armor and cosmetic ornaments. At this time, we're amending our delivery plans for how often we refresh these sets and will no longer be creating a new set for every expansion. However, we are prioritizing delivery of a new ritual armor set alongside the final shape to infuse some new looks. You'll be able to show off your time in the uh, Vanguard, Crucible, and Gaming playlist. We'll also have a new armor set for Charles of Osiris Roosting in just a few short weeks. Here's a preview of the Titan armor, as you can see below. Of course, you can see again on the video if you'd like. Wow. Again, this is another thing where it says it's too hard to make the to make armor, so we're not doing it. And it's like a glass house that you can just throw a rock in and it breaks. Eververse, <laughs> you know, things that make you money, you're happy to do. But the moment you got to do something for free. No, no, that's not happening. That's just not happening. Um, and I'll say it right now. Every single Vanguard set in the last four years is terrible looking awful garbage terrible terrible looks awful why did they release it looking like that i'll never know but they don't look good i think you can make them look good but base they look terrible so no wonder people don't use it this is another example of like what they said about gambit oh you know we don't we don't we don't do gambit because not enough people play it 
but you haven't added anything to make people play it. So why would they? I, you know, I, again, I don't, I don't find myself to be some scholar or something. I'm not saying anything revolutionary here, but if you don't incentivize people to do something wild, they don't do it, right? So we're sitting here saying, yeah, I, people don't use it, so we're going to stop. And again, it's become increasingly challenging. What is this increasingly challenging word they keep using, right? What does this mean? Why, why, what, is it, what about has become increasingly challenging? What is so hard that you have found yourself unable to make an armor set a year for a core playlist activity? I would just love that answer. I'd love it. We're not getting it, though. I'm probably going to be quick on this game security thing. It's a lot of jargon in these things. I will lightly touch on a couple of this, but it's a lot, a lot of jargon. So let's go. Our security team works to prevent cheaters from ruining the experience for legitimate players, whether it be directly in competitive PvP activities or indirectly via boosting or making a new burner account and bringing them into endgame content like trials. Here are a few things in 22 that we show you about on getting to pick players. But so what has changed this year? Over the course of the year, we increased data science, machine learning, building confidence in the detections they produce. These tools allow us to observe interestingly say machine learning, not anything AI, which is pretty much the same thing. These tools allow us to observe and evaluate player behavior in new ways and issue an increasing number of actions in response. Um, okay. In addition, we have continued adapting policies to protect players, including the abuse of external accessibility tools. This is pretty much banned people from using things like Zim and Cronus, I believe. The development of this policy has allowed us to catch tears that we may not have otherwise. The policy not only gives us an avenue to action this form of cheating, but also spurred us to investigate players' behavior in new ways. Finally, we worked with BattleEye to address some network manipulation tools, improve our data collection, detection, and mitigation strategies. Competition is best when fair. Okay, moving on. Can you adjust some recent actions? As a result of extensive investigation with the evolution at the tools of our disposal, we're recently able to issue one of the largest ban waves in our history against account recovery and boosting services and the players who use these services. As our tool set evolves, we continue to build in generous thresholds to help minimize the risk of false positives. Interesting that you have to say that. We also consider multiple factors where issuing bans is an additional safety measures to any set threshold. We've all heard about the false positives that has happened, and it's always sad to hear, right? You hear someone like lost all their stuff. It it, it gets oh, uh, overturned sometimes, but uh, I'm reminded. One second, let me take a sip. I'm reminded of um, D2 Cunsmith, the developer behind the best way of looking at uh weapon rolls and these things. Instead of Destiny, it was via like a web website kind of thing you can also get in as an app i think maybe i don't know but not important anyways he was like falsely bland and he got his account back but <clears throat> it like completely killed out any interest he had destiny and like left him and stuff so they ruined that for us so false positives are very 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 bad and and as far as i understand if people do get false positives they generally do get help with it I, everyone i've heard that's been banned like wrongly it gets overturned so that's very good, I guess. We can do uh, what's next for security for Destiny 2. We will continue to evolve our prevention, <coughs> detection, and ban hammer capabilities. But these are just a part of our overall strategy to combat cheating efforts. Our league team is also aggressively pursuing cheat makers across the globe in an effort to remove the source of cheat software before it is distributed. They have been highly effective in both uncovering cheat makers and bringing litigation against them. Though preparation and execution, they also take time and effort to be successful. These will always be an adaptive approach to our oral NCG efforts as part of in-game security solutions to remove cheating from our game. It's very wise of them to actually take legal action against this because it makes it not free anymore, right? It used to be kind of free to make cheat software, right? Now there is a risk to doing it. It's, it's very uh, Nintendo-like of them. Nintendo, notoriously litigious. They will go after anyone about anything. They see some sort of Net Metroid fan game, boom, cease and desist. They see some sort of Mario thing going on, boom, cease and desist. Right? They'll do it. They're not afraid of it. Bungie, same thing. They're starting to be very, very aggressive with any cheat maker. Very good. One last reminder. As always, we receive countless messages from band accounts. And they pretty much remind you, hey, uh, you can't use your account recovery. If you give it to someone else and they cheat on your behalf, you know, you get banned, it's on, it's on you. Stability updates this is something that we all wanted because this last few seasons have been rough in terms of the game just working. Here we go. The stability of Destiny 2 service is the foundation of the experience. If the game is down and you're getting kicked out of activities, everything else is irrelevant. In late June, we provided an update on the game stability and the steps we we're taking to make your game experience smooth and reliable. Today, we'd like to share 
more about what has been happening behind the scenes and what's next on our roadmap. In update 7.1.5, this is mid-season 21, we rolled out a number of behind-the-scenes service improvements that provide an increase in stability that will set the stage for further upgrades in 7.2.1 and beyond. This includes new logs and metrics not only for our claim system, but also for many of our other services. We also made major improvements to monitoring dashboards and now give the Bungie Network Operations Center greater visibility in these systems. Lines with detect a escalate and diagnose problems more quickly while we'll detect and fix the bug with the signing system before it was able to cause any issues for the player population. All very good flowery stuff. Nothing to add with any of this. Cool. They're making things that the game will work. If you'd like, you can pause the video and read the rest of this. But it's, as far as your understanding, they're doing more testing. If you read there, uh, they're covering across all 50 plus services that help them make testing to run. These include taking a close look at our load balancing code, service to service, communication code, internal messaging, and processing problems. All very flowery, very engineering working things. Uh, these, and this is some of the most expensive stuff that they ever have to do in this game, right? A lot of this is just making the making sure the game runs and works and all the servers run well and their updates and their clients work out and go out smoothly. So, hey, it all makes sense. Uh, let's see. And they have a new way. It helps us protect simple image. might current work here to focus on auto recovery, making internal systems healthier and further isolating system for one another. Problem is just less likely to ask. Yeah. So pretty much making like, hey, so if one thing goes down, it doesn't like kill everything else. Yeah. So makes sense. We're moving on, though. Seasonal structure. As we mentioned back in February, we've been working behind the scenes to shake up the seasonal paradigm this year to subvert player expectations and make each season feel unique. We know our players are looking for more variety and repeatable seasonal activities, and more than anything, we want to continue, co sorry, consistently surprise everyone with what comes next in each season. Although we'll talk a bit more about this below, and you'll see in the action in our showcase, again, I'm writing about the showcase, we're giving ourselves more freedom to stretch narratively and in gameplay systems throughout season 22 and 23. We hope you enjoy coming to this ride with us starting later this month. Briefly, what's to come? Before we get into our six-month progress report of the year, we want to make sure previews several quality of life and core sandbox we're designing to make sure blah, blah, blah. As our midpoint of Nightfall's year, we hope the sum of 72, along with new content we called out here and everything yet to be revealed in the showcase, will make Destiny 2 feel as fresh and exciting as many, uh, as many plays as possible. Here we go. Cosme cosmetic favoring. At long last, you'll be able to pin up to 100 of your favorite cheaters, ornaments, and emotes to the top of the list starting in Season 22. Cool. Quality of life, very nice. Any character who has completed the Beyond Light campaign will be able to acquire all available stasis aspect and fragments from Elsie Bray on Europa starting next season. Long overdue. Long overdue. Because those uh, things were very grindy. One of my friends, uh, former co-host, actually Alex, uh, still doesn't have all the aspects because you have to play the game that much. He and he doesn't play them play them much, of course. Transmax will now be unlocked like shaders before them. Uh, Transmax will now just be a part of your collection. It just it will unlock if you get one. Another long overdue thing. Happy to see it. The Wish Ender quest has gone through a number of changes throughout the year, and in season twenty two, it becomes a real quest. No more. Uh, charged or uncharged discs sitting in your inventory, just a single quest strand in your quest log. So they're just removing, there's no more discs. They're just, you know, if you remember that quest, I remember you had to get like three of the discs and then you had to like go into the Shattered Throne and put it at a statue and stuff. Like, so like, you, you know, not, no more of that. It's just do a wish under quest. Uh, resources tab. This is a change that everyone's excited about. They're adding a resource tab, which will show all the currencies and upgrade materials, and people will be able to look at it. It tells you, you know, uh, if you don't know what this is, this is how you get it. This is what it's used for, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Cool for new players because I imagine they're like, "What is half of this stuff?" Iron Banner challenge splits with Pinnacle Wars not being as big draw as they once were season over season since season of the DPN. We felt it was time to split the uh, Pinnacle acquisition and reputation multipliers. We added back in season the haunt starting in season 22. Iron Banner will have two different stacking challenges each day. One for players who just want the repetition multiplier, who, which does not require using specific seasonal subclasses and one for those who are going after Pinnacle Wars and does require using seasonal subclasses. That's cool, I guess, right? You don't have to run that seasonal subclass. It doesn't feel. It, it'll hopefully make Iron Banner feel a little more fresh, because it won't be use void or strand, use void strand or arc, use use you know, etc. Et yeah, that was always annoying. So I'm very very glad they're at least sort of changing that. Although, don't think you'll change a lot. We'll have to just see, because I feel like people still just want the free gear. 
Like, you know, so who knows? Original Ray Gubbs immediately. Dating all the way back in season three, which your reputation is previously known as Valor, Glory, and Infamy, waited until you hit orbit to process any Ray Gubbs because the almost full screen banner would overwrite the scoreboard if it showed up early. When we revamped and streamlined reputation of the past few years, we moved a rank up banner to the bottom of the screen and made them less conspicuous. But we left the processing of the ranks until you hit orbit. Now we're finally taking the step of making our rank up process immediately at the end of the activity. No matter waiting for rewards, they'll just show up in your loot stream. So moment you hit you, you hit done, boom, you get the activity rewards and, and the rep, which are very nice. Sandbox updates. You're getting a new strand aspect. We're adding three new ones. There are Whirling Maelstrom for Hunter, Banner of War for Titans, and Weave Walk for Warlocks. Stay tuned for more info as we get closer to the launch of the season. Of course, I don't think you want to say it again, but I'm sure the showcase is where we'll see more of it. And uh, maybe we'll get a, um, a twab about it. Who knows? Uh, I always like speculating a little bit. I wonder if Whirling Maelstrom. I wonder what that is for the Hunter. That sounds the coolest banner of war for titans I, I i don't know what that i wonder what that does those are they all have very cool names similar to our first wave of exotic revamps season in the deep the team is reworking another batch of underused exotic armor pieces in season 22 to shake things up and give players a more re oh excuse me i knew it to dive into their vault watch for a new developer insights article going live next week to cover all the changes we got coming so we're getting uh and look into exotic armor soon New weapon subfamilies. Looking further in the future, we'll be introducing some entirely new weapon subfamilies in the final shape. Tune into the showcase on August 22nd for your first look at those in action, as well as some other un unexpected additions to Destiny 2's arsenal yet to come. So, August 22nd, we'll see some big weapon things. Very cool. Weapon tuning, all of our favorite parts, right? Weapon balance. Reduce the variance between the optimal engagement ranges of our mid range weapons, assault, pulse, and hand cannons. Sorry, assault and pulse rifles, and then hand cannon. Slightly reduce the average and game terrain in increasable by pulling in the maximum damage fall off distances of many weapons. So it looks like they want people to get a little bit, a little bit closer. To do this, the highest achievable damage fall off range on almost all weapons will be reduced to some extent, with SERP weapons being reduced more than others. And then in many cases, the lower edge of the damage fall off ranges will be coming up. Keep in mind, even with their damage fall off starts values being similar, weapons will perform differently once their damage fall off begins, as they currently do in the live game. Rifle style weapons will experience fall off more gradually, while handheld ones will experience it more quickly. But the differences should be much less extreme. We'll also have hand tuned a small list of exotics and special weapons with the intention of keeping them near where they are in the live game, as opposed to allowing them to receive outsized buffs or nerfs if those are overarching changes. For sure, all the info in the upcoming weapons preview article as well. In addition to this, a lot of other things you look forward to in season 22. This is not a comprehensive list, but we wanted to give you a sneak peek. Hand cans will see an increased reload speeds and PVE damage buffs against minor and majors. I feel like they're really buffing hand cans. I feel like there might be potentially meta and PV now. Sword full power heavy attacks will be usable with any non zero amount of sword energy. Interesting. And Sword Guard is being buffed in several areas. Touch of Malice is getting some tweaks we think players will enjoy. Perks such as Biopod, Envious Assassins, and Over Under will become much more useful in Season 22. Watch for a full breakdown later this month. Interesting. Biopod, Envious Assassin, and Under Over will become much more useful. Hmm. Those are all related to Magazine and Reload, except on Under Over, which Under Over affects damage to Overshield targets. Uh, I remember people tried to get that working in PvP, where you know you can use it against a Overshield Titan. Obviously, you don't face an Overshield Titan to so justify running a whole perk dedicated to that. So I'm curious how it become more useful. I'm imagining Over Under's game completely revamped to maybe being something along the lines of Adaptive Munitions? Maybe, but that that would mean that adaptive munitions become useless, right? So, I don't know. Not too much speculation you can do that, I guess. Reinforcing our goals for this year. About six months ago, we laid out our plans to achieve four main goals for Destiny 2. Oh, I love this one. In our previous state of the game, expand players' imaginations, bring challenge back to Destiny, enrich our content, and connect our guardians. With life all in its first two seasons under our belt. In the launch of Season 22 and our showcase just around the corner. We'd like to take a moment to catch everyone up on how far we've come with these goals and where we're going from here. Think of this as our Destiny 2 store card. First up, 
Expand players' imagination. In my fallen season of the Defiance, we transform many of the ways players typically interact with the game. From core systems and build crafting overhauls to streamlining seasonal currencies. With Season of the Deep, we replace the typical vendor upgrade model and introduce the new deep dive activities and pressure trials, which represent fresh experiments for Destiny 2 that we believe are worth the investment. While there is always room for us to revise and improve, the community's in response has reinforced that we're on the right track with norm-breaking efforts like this, and we'll be rolling out something very new and different in Season 23. Crazy, if you get new stuff, people are excited. Now, without spoiling anything ahead of our showcase, our next season will be heading into creative territories we've never explored before. We're changing some things up in a big way, including seasonal progression on program with an all-new mechanic. All will be revealed August 22nd. I wanna, I'm, I'll try to remember. I'm, I'm going to look up how many times August 22nd was brought up in this arc. Take a step back to examine the overall narrative for the team. The team is laser-focused on ensuring the connective tissue and our storytelling be seen. Season 20 and 23 and the final shape is more impactful than last year's season. Really up to the nightfall. Ooh, excuse me. We're taking the feedback to heart and loading the syrup with important moments designed to capture players' imagination. And move the saga forward with each beat. We've already proven this out in Season of the Deep. With the revelations of the Witness Origins, substantial lore drops all, uh, throughout the season in Neomuna, and the implications of where our Guardians go from here after the final mission's cutscene. We know there are some who would have preferred to experience those stories during Lightfall's campaign. <laughs> With those players in mind, we believe the totality of these year's uh, narratives will set the stage for the final shape in ways that a single story beat never could. And to put concerns to rest right now, the final shape and its raid will provide a climactic conclusion to the Light and Darkness saga before we look ahead to what comes next in Destiny 2. Oh, the narrative for season 20 to 2023. Or sorry, I keep doing 20, so, uh, season 23. I didn't hate it as much as other people did, I feel like. I feel like the actual core narrative, so the core narrative is actually very good. So like from season to season, like that core through line of like us trying to figure out how to get into the travel and the win is. Although, of course, obviously all this was very rushed and this isn't how it was supposed to go because things were delayed and and they had to make a whole new expansion because of this stuff all that aside they handled it pretty well if you figure out like none of this was even supposed to happen so it's been handled pretty well what's not been handled is the veil you can't just be like oh the veil have it be a major store point in the game and it just never pay off that's just not good storytelling. I don't know why they keep trying to defend it. It's not. No one knows what a radio mast is. No one knew what the veil was. And it's not cooler when you find it out. It's it's only cooler if no one else knows what it is. And it's interesting and intriguing. And we're not constantly referring to it. And it is a general mystery. Not a, oh, we saved the veil. And we act like it's a big deal in these things. We didn't even know what it was. So why would we care about it? We don't know what it is, right? So I don't know why they keep trying to defend it. Like, oh, you know, it worked out. And we think it would be better than one story beat. No, you did it because you had to. You had to do it that way because you couldn't get all this into the Lightfall story because it wasn't supposed to exist. So I don't know why they keep trying to act like this is like supposed to happen, but who cares? Now, probably for the biggest meme of this whole thing, I can't imagine the memes that will happen from this. Bring challenge back to destiny. Uh, the, the memes are going to be countless. Like, yeah. I play a lot, so I'm not pretending like I'm like, you know, some schmo at this game. I am I I regard myself as being pretty good at the game. They have not brought Josh back to Destiny. Uh I ran the GMs in a single day this uh season just like I have the last like two seasons and uh they're not that hard. So like don't really feel like challenge has been brought back at all. So we'll see. What they think. And also, I don't think challenge equals give things more health, as they will try to justify, I think. Although we're a bit uneven on this one in the start of the year, we feel we achieved this goal after making additional tweaks based on general feedback at Lifehall's launch. While enemies in Neo Mono still pack a punch regardless of your level, players have been able to steadily calm and power to take on more difficult challenges they may have had in a tough time with early in the year, due to the absence of a power level cap increase in the season of deep. 
Following the success of these changes, we're confirming today that we also won't be raising the power level cap in Season 22, which is very cool. We've seen a ton of positive feedback on the decision from players who appreciate being able to play at their own pace, rather than feeling compelled to chase piano schools each week. Of course, we still have plenty of activities where power is crucial, including Master Rage, Dungeon Content, Legend, and Master Nightfalls. Grandmasters, Legend, Master Solo, Lost Sectors, uh, Trials of Osiris. This will still be the case throughout Season 22, and your artifact will still be as important as ever. For those craving even tougher challenges, we raise the bar on the G Grandmaster Nightfalls. I completely disagree. Uh, in this season, with our PsyOps Battleground, which will make an additional appearance before the end of the season for those who didn't get a chance to take it on in the first time. As usual, we'll continue to modify feedback as we add more battlegrounds to the Vanguard Nightfall and GM schedule later in the night life. Yo. Yeah. Quick note. I do th actually think the PsyOps was challenging. I'm not saying like, oh, you know, is, did they raise the bar? No. We're just too strong for them for them to be able to say that. The raising the bar was like uh what's an example it's like um what's that one called from europa and then the the strike i'm blanking on the name oh my god glassway glassway was raising the bar when that thing launched that was that, i remember that being one of the most grueling things i've ever i've ever done in the game at the time uh and we weren't like a billion times as strong as we are now we experienced that place getting even weaker just when you got Bleak Watchers the next uh, season, right? So it's not even close to raising the bar, in my opinion, but I do think it is difficult. It is. I'm not saying it's it's easy by any means, but I'm, I'm just saying, like, I think we're just too strong to be able to be like, yeah, no, we raised the bar. I'm like, mm, that's a little ambitious, I think. We're not quite there yet, but it is a fun, challenging time. Enrich our content. Based on the feedback throughout the year of the Witch Queen, we knew players wanted more exotic missions that the community would need to discover on their own. We also heard the request from longtime players for the return of previously released exotic missions that the team absolutely loved creating, and we got to work to answer the call. So you're saying they love to create it. Did you love it even more taken away? Because that's what you did. Again, always this backspeak. Why are you pretending like this was always the thing? In season of finds, we delivered the Avalon exotic mission with Vex Calibre as its prize for those who discovered the path into the Vex network. Season of Deep brought the Whetstone exotic mission to deep divers in search of a new Wicked Implement scout rifle and its catalyst. And in just a few weeks, we're bringing back some of the best Destiny 2 content we've ever made with our new exotic mission, Rotator, starting on day one of season 22. Dotation will kick off the return of the Presage, one of my favorite exotic missions, if not my favorite, to offer a new avenue for players to earn Dead Man's Tail, which will also be craftable for the first time. After that, Vex Obscura and Operation Serve Shield will join the rotation, offering up their respectable craft of exotic weapons and chaos as well. I guess, is that, I mean, offering up their respective craft of exotic weapons and chaos as well. I mean, Operation, I mean, Vex Obscura didn't have a craftable exotic or catalyst. Uh, technically, it had, I mean, it had an exotic weapon and a catalyst, but it wasn't craftable. So I'm assuming they just mean, okay, respective as in, oh, okay, I, I, I see now. We'll have more details on what else to expect from the exotic mission return upcoming this week in Bungie Blog as we close to launch. Cool. To recap the PvP front, we're delivering the new season to a new we mentioned above, including the brand new multiplex map, new relic, checkmate, competitive division emblem, a sleek new trials armor set, in addition to new returning weapons coming into Crucible, Iron Banner, and Trials playlist. We'll also be adding new sandbox overhauls, exotic armor upgrades, and weapon tuning changes to keep them out fresh. Alongside the new ways to play VP when the season kicks off later this month. They're really trying to be like, look, we did a lot for PvP, even though it's for the whole game and not just PvP. <laughs> Finally, we caught out back in February that we're initially targeting more changes to ritual content in the final season of the year. While we've made the recent decision to push this initiative to the final shape, we have plans to replace some bounties for the more rewarding and engagement system tentatively called the Pathfinder. This is going to be debuted on a new destination in the final shape, and we're currently nailing down a plan for how we can use the new system to replace core original bounties in the new year. For now, here's a work in progress preview of the Pathfinder UI. You can, of course, see this on your screen if you're looking, watching the video along with me. Looks kind of cool. Looks like you'll be doing similar things where, like, you know, you'll do an objective here. Then you can go here, do the objective. Maybe you go there. You know, you can, like, follow this line to get whatever this is. I'm assuming this is, like, oh, an exclusive weapon or maybe a special weapon or, you know, some something along the lines of something exclusive to this. I don't know. Maybe it's just a pinnacle. Who knows? 
Connect our guardians. The gameplay system and quality of life features we added in Lightfall made Destiny 2 the most welcoming it's ever been for new and returning players. We're doubling now as we head into the final shape. Season 22 will include new ways to experience key in-game moments in Destiny 2's history. To, get, to help get millions of guardians caught up for the confrontation with the witness. In season 23, our upcoming fire team finder and LFG feature will be the silver bullet for players who never had a full fire team to run end game content before, including raids, dungeons, master level activities, and more. And in the final shape, we're making big changes to the burger system that will help connect every sorry, even more players and remove barriers, keeping friends from taking on the same content together. We'll have more info on that in the showcase. A little hint on something that was leaked that I won't spoil here. The feature list above, combined with everything we are about to show on August 22nd and everything yet to come, will create the best gameplay experience for the wildest possible audience that Destiny has ever seen. The final shape is incredibly special to us as the culmination of Destiny's first decade. They make sure to say first decade. And we're committed to making it just as special for all players worldwide as the showdown with the witness approaches. Thanks again for your time to read this. Today was just a piece of what we have in store. So if you want to run to the top before then, be sure you have the showcase on the 22nd. Now, that back up there. Okay, so... My thoughts. I'm going to give you my full thoughts as like a closer. Um, it will also be a separate video, so if there's weird editing here, that's why. Uh, but let's let's discuss this. Final... Final thoughts. Final shape, final thoughts. Final thoughts about the state of the game. August 2033. I thought it was pretty... Whatever. Very underwhelming. Again, you saw... If you saw the original video. Again, I'm breaking this up. That a lot of it seems like backspeak, especially if you compare the two. And a lot of it just doesn't make sense. And again, I understand video game making is hard. But that's just not an excuse that I like. Do you understand? We can't just say that and I have to just eat it and be like, okay. I will consume. I'll continue. Sorry, master, for asking a question, right? It's just not, not very good, right? It's not a great argument. You can't just be vague and be like, checkmate. You know, and that's my main takeaway from this. I find it interesting that they continue to be like, you know, doing X is hard, so we're not doing it. It's like, why? Can we get a reason? Is it marathon? It's OK. If it is, just say it. Is it revenue? Do you are you too busy helping PlayStation? That's too recent. So, OK, I can't be it. Right. It's been happening for quite a while. And also, you couldn't make an armor set a season. Sorry, a year. That's pretty. I mean, that's, that's wow. We get fully detailed Eververse sets and these things, and they're twenty dollars each. Increase the season pass and all these things. Like where? I'm just curious. Where's the money? Right? You're expanding. You're upgrading the cost to our end, but we're not seeing much in return. I feel right. The core expansions are good, and a lot of the core game is very, very good. It's still Destiny in this core, and it's still great. I love this game, and I'll continue playing it. Um, uh, I won't be putting any money into the Eververse anymore. I haven't been doing that in three, four years, I think. I can't remember the last time I bought it, just because you get so much Bright Dust in the game. And you even remove the ability to buy armor sets with Bright Dust, right? You can't buy the PlayStation exclusive. So not Sorry, not exclusive, but the PlayStation sets with Bright Dust. You can't at all. What, what is that? What is It's just weird. A lot of things are just weird now. Strange. Why can't you buy it for Eidos? There's just little things like that. It's like, why are we slowly nickel and diming every little thing? Why are we raising the season pass? Doesn't seem like it's really worthwhile. Why can't you buy the silver for the exact amount so you have to spend 20 bucks? What do you need this revenue for? They don't do this at willy-nilly no reason. There's a reason. Is it? Is it? costs are too high and you can't levy um the revenue elsewhere are you seeing a decrease in net revenue or profit and you have to make it up somewhere what is going on is marathon just so expensive is your retention so expensive the 3.6 billion injection and a million of it on retention makes me think no so what is it 
there has to be something. And I, and I wish we had, frankly, more journalists in the games industry that we could hear about this. What is going on over there? Why is these little things happening? Someone knows. Someone knows. They want to make movies and TV shows and these things. We still haven't heard anything about that. So it's not in that. Is it just Marathon? Why is Marathon so expensive? Look, game development is very expensive. $200 million is nothing to sniff at for making a new AAA game. This isn't really a AAA full-on game. This is a multiplayer game. It could be close to that amount of money. It depends. We don't really know the scope of the game. Marketing, of course, is very expensive. That can be anywhere between the, uh, the same price of making the game to double. Some people some people will spend $100 million on the game and cost $200 million to market it. That's not like a carrying comment, right? So is that something that maybe that they're doing, that they're sinking a lot of money to make sure Marathon works? Okay, again, I'm not saying all of this works now. Marathon's not even close to being shipped yet. We still have a whole other year, maybe a year and a half to two years before we even see the game. I'm just trying to, what are like what are the reasons? What's What's happening? Is the budgeting, you know? Inflation, I'd love to see it because it doesn't feel like money going in. It doesn't feel like we're seeing 100% of that conversion to it. It's like maybe like 70, 80% of the conversion, right? Like, why aren't we seeing more playlist growth? What? So why are we seeing not that many strikes? It's just an expansion and nowhere else. It's all just battlegrounds that some of them are good and most of them aren't. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, it just It's frustration at the core. Uh, because I know they can be great. I know they can nail it. I have 100% confidence Fire Stripes can be good. If not great. Raid's going to be probably awesome. We'll have to see how all this comes out. Curious on what your thoughts, of course. Comment. Let me know what you think. I'll be interested to know if you have any opinions on anything I have said. Any retorts. Anything you'd like to expand upon. Again, let me know. Comments below. I think I'm actually going to keep this all in one piece because I don't think I have just too much to say about my final thoughts. So until next time, that's going to be me. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. I will see you in the regular schedule program later. And until then, go Chiefs.